words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Enduring the spiritual wilderness in your life. Mercy. Our scripture lesson is very revealing. For the Bible tells us that this temptation and experience is a reminder that there will be wilderness experiences in all of our lives. Yes. All of us at some point in our life will experience a wilderness experience. Yes. Historically, yes. the Bible talks about uh, wilderness experiences. Mm -hmm. It tells us that this is not the first time that God's people, or God's person, or God's anointed or those that have been separated unto God have endured a wilderness experience because uh, we recognize the children of Egypt. Yes. Uh, between the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, they experienced a wilderness experience. And as we think about this wilderness experience, a question may be asked, uh, how do we define a spiritual wilderness? Yes. For when we think of a wilderness, we think of a wild and untamed place. We think of a place that is out of order, no order at all. There's no comfort. The weather's hostile. Maybe hot or maybe cold. It's Difficult to find or grow food because of the terrain, the ground. And the environment may be hostile and animals may not be there because they can't find food because the, grain, because the ground don't produce anything. So we can say that it is a harsh type of environment. Yes. Yeah. And because of that definition of wilderness, it means that it can be a test and a challenge to your ability to survive. So in this framework of definition for wilderness, the question is talking to you about how to endure your spiritual wilderness. Yeah. And as we get involved in our scripture lesson, we find that uh, verse 1 of chapter 4 tells us that Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yes. Now let us focus on this scenario because it is telling us that there were some things taking place prior to this that were important in order to prepare him for this test. Mm -hmm. You see, this this wilderness experience happened immediately after Jesus had made a total commitment of himself to do the will of God. Yes. That's so important. This, this, this wilderness experience, the spiritual wilderness came after Jesus had made a total commitment because in chapter 3 in the book of Matthew tells us of his baptism. And when he came out of the water, there was a dove descending from heaven and a voice from heaven say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yes. So we find that Jesus had, had gone through all of the process of committing himself and, and he went through the process of rebirth, meaning going through the baptism. He went in and his sins were washed away. So when he came out, he was purified. Yes. And, and, and so God announced and God anointed and God appointed 
and God recognized who he was and, and gave him his responsibility. The word spirit is capitalized in this uh, uh, lesson. It, it emphasized that it's not just a spirit, but it was the spirit of the Lord. Amen. So we find that here Jesus has been prepared and the spirit of the Lord was upon him. Footnote, as born-again believers, spiritual wilderness areas are places that we will pass through as we do God's will. Yes. This is a fact. When you have been totally committed, when you have committed yourself to, to commit yourself to do the work and the will of God, then you're opening yourself up oh, yes. for the enemy to come in yes. because he knows you have completely committed yourself unto him, so he's going to come to, to kind of test you. Amen. For the scripture said that Jesus was led up of the Spirit. In other words, Jesus didn't do this on his own. He was led of the Spirit of God to go into this wilderness ex, ex, uh, experience, into this wilderness place. And the word said he went there to be tempted of the devil. Now he's not just going to go around and say, well, let me go and see where the devil can tempt me. No, but the, the writer is giving us an overview of what is taking place. He's telling us that he's going into this place and what would take place while he's there. Amen. And so we find that Jesus is in this. And we, when we have committed ourselves unto the Lord, be assured that the enemy is coming at you with all that he has. Yes. And listen to how this happened. And when he had fasted, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And, and, and while he's there in the wilderness, mm -hmm. uh, completely committed to the Lord, then all of a sudden, uh, uh, the enemy shows up. But it didn't show up when Jesus said well, it was really, really strong. He showed up when Jesus had committed himself and given his all. For the Bible tells us he had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. That means, uh, translate, he's been fasting a long time. Yes. So if he had fasted that long, the Bible said he was a hundred and thirst. In other words, his body was re, uh, depleted of food and water. So he's vulnerable. Yes. And, 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 and so here we find Jesus in this wilderness place. Here we find him very vulnerable. And, 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 and in verse 3 it said, the tempter came to him. Every believer should Learn a lesson from this verse. And the tempter came to him. Yes. If the tempter came to Jesus, surely he what? He'll come to you. All right. If the tempter came to Jesus, surely he will come to you. It's not a, yes. a matter of if. Uh-uh. It's a matter of but when will the tempter come to challenge you. Because that's his job. His job is to challenge you yes. when you have totally committed yourself unto the Lord. Yes. He came to Jesus when Jesus had finished a 40-day fast. As a result of the fast, Jesus was in a state of enhanced faith because he committed himself unto the Lord. Yeah. He was in a state of enhanced faith and heavenly determination. You have to be in that kind of condition after you have fasted. Your body takes on a whole new dynamic. Yes. Yes. So Jesus was ready to do the will of the Lord. Uh, his faith was determined 
and in his mind and his spirit was determined and focused to do the will yes. of his father. So as we study this, we must understand something. Before you can stand the test of a spiritual wilderness, you must be endowed with an enhanced faith and a heavenly determination. Amen. You, can't, you can't face the enemy. If you are not focused, if you, you don't have, as we emphasize, an enhanced faith, what does that mean? An enhanced faith means that you know that you know that you know that you know. In other words, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. When you have that enhanced faith and, and that heavenly determination, that means I know enough about him to know that I want him to be with me yes. wherever I go and in all yes. that I do. Yes. In other words, it means that you must be focused yes. on your calling. Thank you, Jesus. If God has done something for you, you must be committed to what God has laid upon you to do and you must be committed totally to carry it through. You see, before Jesus ascended the mountain, he had been baptized and received the approval of his heavenly father. Yes. And Matthew 3, 16 said, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the, mountain, out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. I want you to understand something. That Jesus had committed himself and I want you to, to, to recognize that he had the blessings of the Lord. Yeah. So don't you try to make it through the wilderness with the strength from God. Man. You see, oftentimes we, we want to we get, we get worked up and we want to get out of here and, and fight the devil. Yeah. You know, but the devil knows who you are. Yeah. And he also knows just how strong you yeah. are. And so he let you come out and let you might win uh, the first part of the sprint, but he always win the race if you haven't been properly trained yes, to, 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 to run the race. Yes, yes. And the only way you can be trained to run the race, the race against the enemy, is to be uh, fasting and, and, and committed to the word of God. You remember when those disciples came to Jesus because someone had asked him to do something they weren't capable of doing. Yes. Healing his son. Uh -huh. And the disciples, not a disciple, but some disciples mm -hmm. were confused because they had tried everything they had taught, had yes. been taught of Jesus. Everything Jesus told them to do, it's obvious they had tried it, but they had failed. And when the father came to Jesus and, and, and asked Jesus, uh, uh, told him about his son Jesus immediately healed the young man mm -hmm. and his disciples came to him puzzled now how is it that you were able to do it and we couldn't we followed your instruction to the T and Jesus said to him yes you probably did but these things come by what fasting and praying in other words you have to have your faith in hand and you have to have your focus on everything. You can't let anything else deter you. Amen. So the enemy attacked Jesus, and Jesus was ready for it. All times people get the desire and motivation to do something for the kingdom. And it seems that when they attempt to get started, as soon as they get started, it seems like all hell breaks loose. I know I got some witnesses here today. Amen. You know that you are obedient to the Lord, but trials and tribulation are all that you receive. You try to, Lord, I, I want to do it, and every time I take a step forward, yes. I'm knocked back three steps. Yes, yes. Why is it, Lord, I, I'm trying to be obedient, etc., 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 and it seems that that no matter which way uh, we're going, it seems that the enemy intercepts and calls me grief. Yeah. I want you to know that before your blessing, there will be some testing. All right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil appeared to Jesus 
and effort and offered him an opportunity to show off. Yes. That was the first thing the devil did. Now Jesus, he, he's fasting, he's praying, he's full of the power uh, of the Holy Spirit. He's ready to do the will of the of his heavenly father, and the enemy comes to him. And 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 in verse in verse three, he comes to him and engages him in a very, very a general conversation. He doesn't ask him to do anything uh, elaborate, anything unusual. He just appeals to him in a very interesting way because all he said to him is, uh, if you be the son of God, he knew he was because he knew the spirit had already appointed him. He, the enemy said, if you be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. You know, all powers in your hand is a little thing for you to prove to me yes. that you're the Son of God. After all, you can, can turn water into wine. You can take a few loaves of bread and feed the multitude, a few fish and feed a, a, a multitude, make a banquet out of a couple fish and a yes. couple loaves of bread. You can turn these, these stones into bread. The enemy appealed to him in a very subtle way. And what he wanted to do was to tell Jesus, look, this is an opportunity for you to show off. Because if you, if you turn the, the stones into bread, you know, your fame will go abroad and everybody will want to hear what you have to say and follow you because they know wherever you are, if there's some stones around, there'll be some bread around. All right. and, and the way the enemy... Uh, 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 came to Jesus, he came to him in a very subtle way, and he appealed to Jesus' pride. This is your opportunity to show off. Mm -hmm. Let folk know you have some power. And, and Jesus said to him very, very deliberately, uh -huh. he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Not some of God's word, but all of God's word. You know, this is where so many people run into a problem in their relationship with God. They want to pick and choose. Well, this part I believe. You know, I, I believe in praying, but I don't believe in putting God in charge of my life because there are some things I think I could be in control. And, and the biggest thing I, I should be able to control is what's in my pocket. And, and so I'll just obey God by telling everybody about him. And I, I'll just obey God by showing up in worship services. I, I'll just obey God as long as it don't require that I allow him to take charge of my purse. Yes. Lord, everything but that. But if he said you to let him be in charge of everything, the first thing one ought to do is to say, Lord, I'm not smart enough to handle my resources. All right, all right. I, I'm, I'm turning them over to you and let you allocate to me through your word how I'm to appropriate what I have. So we're going to, to, to be caught up with defending ourselves against the spiritual wilderness. We must understand the word of God. Yes. You see, every time the enemy came to Jesus, he, Jesus used the word. You see, the word of God makes the difference in our testing. Yes. No matter what kind of test we have, the word of God makes a difference yes. in our testing. Yes. I know in this life that we are living and from time to time you've seen, you've experienced it on the job, you've experienced it in the community, you have experienced by seeing yourself doing all the right things. And, 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 and yet, uh, you see ungodly people around you that are, uh, seem to be flourishing, but don't care about the Lord. And you're wondering, well, Lord, I do it all. I do everything you tell me to do. I'm, I, I, I'm obedient to your word. I, I, I give. I, I do all the things that you have instructed me to do. And Lord, I'm I'm, I'm hardly making it in my car. Yes. 
uh, or my car is carrying me where I want to go, but I'm looking over there at that rascal who don't know you, don't care about you. He's riding a new car, and it seems like he's wearing new stuff. And Lord, here I am just struggling along. Well, the Word of God, because you know the Word of God, it will anchor you, it will temper you, and the verse 1 of the 37th Psalm will remind you, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Why? The Word of God let us know what's going on. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass yes. and wither as a green herb. You see, so when you're wondering about What's going on around you when you see people that don't know the Lord, don't care about the Lord, seeming to prosper and flourish? You don't worry about them. You just pray yes. and pray and pray because God, through His Word, has promised to sustain you. Yes. In these economic times, these economic chaotic times, where the economy is breaking down and the prospects of unemployment and Financial loss is on the horizon, and folk are, are trembling and fainting because of all of the negative things that are going on around. And those of us that are anchored in the Lord, the Word of God will sustain us. Yes. Psalm 37 25 reminds us, as the psalmist wrote, he said, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I yes. not seen the righteous forsaken. Noah's seed begging bread. In other words, he's lived a long time and he realized that no matter what the circumstances are, God will take care of his own. Yeah. And in these times of challenge, in these times of chaos, in these times of confusion, be anchored in the word of God and recognize that God promise is always true. No matter what's going on, you anchored yourself yes. in the Word of God because Jesus Himself anchored Himself in the Word. For the Bible tells us in verse 5 that the devil takes him into a holy place and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and says, If you be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. The devil knows the Word. The devil knows the Word. He's, he, he, Recite the word. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dice thy foot against a stone. In other words, the, the, the enemy is using scripture yes. to challenge Jesus. And then again in verse 7, Jesus come back at him and said, but it is written. It is written, Satan. I know his word, for his word is emblazoned in my heart. It is written, Satan, you're not to tempt the Lord thy God. In other words, don't you do those things that you know are not pleasing in the sight of God. Don't you do some crazy stuff yes. trying to prove the Lord that the Lord it, it, it was going to hear your crazy cry. <laughs> Jesus said, uh, it is written, don't tempt the Lord. You know, there are a lot of folk that that live on the edge when it comes to their relationship with God. They, they live on the edge. They, they, they do just enough to not fall over. Yes. But I, I, I would say to them, uh, be careful. Because you might go to sleep. All right. And in the process of storing the sleep, you just might fall off the fence. Yes. And the angel of the Lord may not be there mm -hmm. to help you. And again. The devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain yes. and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou just fall down and worship. Jesus in that spiritual wicked wilderness, but Jesus is fortified and equipped. To face the enemy. Yes. And the word tells us, ha, get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Yes. I want you to understand when the devil, when the devil comes at you, you need the word. Yes. You need the word. You need the word. When the doctor has said to you the things that you don't need to hear. Yes. 
because it don't sound good. Yes. Giving you a dire prognosis and, and letting you know that what you have is not a whole lot of hope. The doctor has done what he knows to do. Yes. And he shared with you what he knows to share. But when the doctor has done all that he's done, I would never tell anybody don't hear what the doctor tells you. I would never tell anybody not obey what the doctor tells you to do because the doctor is doing the best he can. Yes. But we also know that we have an extension. Yes. And the extension is according to Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, yes. we are healed. So no matter what the doctor is saying, no matter what our condition has been, we realize that Jesus paid it all and all to him. Yes, you don't, you, don't, you don't allow Satan to get over with you. You just use the word. And when Jesus got tired of Satan, he said, get away from me. Get away from me. Jesus closed the conversation by letting him know that the word of God will help you endure your wilderness, yes. your spiritual wilderness. It's the word of God that will sustain you during your spiritual wilderness experience. I want you to know, like the songwriter wrote, all day, all night, the angels <coughs> keep a watch yes. over me. We need to understand that. We need to understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. We need to understand that. Yes. And because we understand we ought to walk in boldness. Yes. Not, as, not as defeated, but as conquerors. Yes. Because we have the mighty army of yes. God to sustain us. Yes. Children of God ought to walk with their heads up high. Yes. Proud to be a child of God. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm redeemed. I fought with a fight. Jesus has gave his own life. I'm redeemed. The angels can't say that, but I can say it. And because I'm redeemed, I'm somebody. I don't care what the newspaper is saying. I don't care what the television and the radio is saying. I know I'm anchored. In the Lord, and he promised that he'll take care of me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That will help you endure that spiritual wilderness. You just let yourself know who you are. And you let them know, yourself know, that you have a heavenly father. Yes. Who owns the whole world. You have all that you need. He'll provide. Those are the weapons that you need. Those are the equipment that you need. That's what you need when you are facing that wilderness spiritual experience. Yes, yes. You need to have that. And remember, the enemy is not coming at you until he thinks he can overcome you. Yes. And he usually thinks he can overcome you when you made a commitment, a total commitment unto the Lord and you feel fortified by the Lord. And let me tell you something. Every now and then those trials that are coming your way are not because of something you have not done. But it could be because of what you have done and everything you have done has been what God required of you. Let me know. Let me let you know and remind you that every now and then you got to be tested. Yes. And they tell me the hottest fire is what tempers the strongest steel. That, that steel that's been tempered by white, by, by red heat is not as strong as, as that white heat. Yes. And that white heat, I don't believe, is as strong as the blue heat. And when your trials and tribulations go through the hottest heat, then when it comes out, you're strong. So every now and then, when you have done all you can do and you know you've yes, been obedient yes. to the word of God and the trials are coming your way and you don't understand that that's all right, as Moses told the people of Israel, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. 
He'll fight your battle. You'll hold your peace. All you have to do is just hold on. When you're in that spiritual wilderness, just hold on and hold out. And I guarantee you that God will show up at the right time. Sometimes the right time is the 11th hour. That's all right. He'll come down and he will rescue you from those circumstances. Yes. But when he rescues you from those circumstances, you have been fortified so you can take on greater challenges yes. and be a strong warrior yes. in the army of the Lord. I want you to understand, when the tempter comes and you're caught up in the spiritual wilderness, the word of God will carry you through. Amen. 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 Before I give an invitation to him, let us all stand for the doors of the church are open.